Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Salatu vesselamu ala Resulillah ve ala alihi ve ashabihi ve man wala amma ba'd. So today I came across this uh, question from uh, a friend of mine who's an imam. Uh, and the question is as follows, right? Uh, he's saying, I was asked today in maktab, like, like in the evening madrasa, by a student how to answer the following question for his RE lesson. And the question is, if Islam has rules which imply discrimination, would you follow it? And he's saying the question was asked near the end of the lesson, so we left the discussion for tomorrow. Now, he hasn't said how old the child is. So, you know, um, like, what do you guys think of that question? Okay. Um, it seems to me that RE is fast becoming um, a subject that is being increasingly taught, or at least in inner cities, being taught by people who seem deliberately hell bent on asking Muslim kids in particular these leading questions that eventually end up with them doubting their uh, their faith or a particular aspect of their faith right and they're doing this under the guise of you know developing their critical faculties right it's critical thinking um i'm sorry but who's going to critique this question I mean, this question is basically a, a, a trap, and this is this this is happening like everywhere. You know, I have um, like I've come across uh, uh, an RE teacher who was who directly influenced um, uh, young girls to leaving their faith, which eventually resulted in them in them leaving home. Is that her job? She was an RE teacher. It was that is that her job as an RE teacher to turn children away from their faith, right? And she did it. You know, she successfully did it. The community didn't know how to deal with it, so she got away with it scot free. This true story. Again, another imam reached out to me to tell me this, right? You know, I've met an, a, a, another young boy left his faith because of the tactics employed by. Uh, by his RE teacher and I'm hearing about this again and again and again constantly these kind of weird leading questions by RE teachers to to kind of force children into either questioning their faith or in like this question it's a form of entrapment it's a form of entrapment right because let's face it what is this kid supposed to say all right he comes back and he says he he answers so if he answers as he should that if there is something that is categoric in islam then then i will abide by it and i will follow it irrespective uh of what you think sir or miss um whether it's discrimination or not it, that remains to be seen i don't believe my religion is discriminatory but that's a that's a different question that's a matter of your perspective Right? You thinking something is discriminatory doesn't make it discriminatory. Right? That's a that's a matter that's open for debate. But the problem is though that this makes the child come across as intolerant. So what does he have to do? He has to go away and like, oh no, if it's discriminatory, then obviously I'm not going to follow my religion. Hang on a second. So what? Whether or not he follows his religion or not is subject to whether Mr. RE teacher or Miss RE teacher regards it as discriminatory, regards it as discriminatory or not, or whether current practices, current policies in in the workplace, current legislation, uh, consider it to be discriminatory or not. Is that is is that what we're basically saying? And then what happens if the child sticks to his guns and says, "I don't care, I'm still going to follow it"? What happens? Gets pre gets gets reported to prevent. I mean it. Is this what RE teachers are supposed to do? Is this their mandate? Is this what the national curriculum says they should be doing? Anyway, you get my point, right? So my simple message to all of you out there, right? 
parents, young people, stick to your gun, stick to your faith. And if you ever encounter an RE teacher who is asking leading questions like that, the first thing you do is you use your critical thinking to challenge the teacher. If you're the student, if you use your critical thinking by challenging the teacher, and then you report it to your parents, you report it to your parents, you report it to your local uh, mosque, you report it to organizations like MEND, right? You report it as an Islamophobic incident. All right? And let these people deal with it. Let your parents deal with it. Parents, when you find out about incidents like this, you need to go and you need to meet the head teacher of the school and ask them questions like I'm asking. Why is the RE teacher asking leading questions that necessarily entail a form of entrapment, right? That ultimately lead to your child questioning his or her faith or your child ending up being put in this compromising situation where it seems like them holding on to their face results in them appearing intolerant or appearing discriminatory or something or other. The only person that is guilty of putting them in that situation is the RE teacher. We haven't done it. We teach our children, we teach our children their faith, right? We don't go around giving them the impression that they're, that they're uh, acting uh, uh, in, in a discriminatory way. So why is the RE teacher doing it? You see what I'm trying to say? Imams, if you find out, if you're, if, if the children that you teach tell you that this is happening, honestly, if I was in your position, right, I would make an appointment with the head teacher, right, and say, as a faith leader, I would like to address this with you, and I would like to raise this issue with you, right? Is it the school's policy, right, to, to teach RE in a way that creates doubt about their faith in the minds of children? Is this, is, is this the, is this the pedagogy, right, for critical thinking? Is this how you do it? How about asking the question, if a teacher was to ask you a question like that in RE, would that be an acceptable critical question? You know, and, and we can continue this cycle, right? The point is, it's wrong. This is fundamentally wrong, right? In, and in any case, if this is indeed the, 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 the pedagogy in RE, right, then it is discriminatory because it discriminates against freedom of religion. Children's religion and their faith should not be threatened by their school teachers and certainly not their RE teachers. Right. The question itself is discriminatory. And any teachers who are doing things like that, they are discriminating against your children, against our children, by infringing on their freedom of religion. All right. Our children should be feeling safe all right, in school from having their faith attacked in this way. I leave the message with you now. Please, look, keep an eye out, talk to your children, and don't let any RE teacher or any school get away with practices like this please right stand up do something about it and this is not this is not standing up for intolerance or being bigoted this is you standing up for your rights against bigotry against discrimination against narrow-mindedness that's what you're doing okay you are standing up for what is absolutely within the law right? What, you are standing up for things that are regarded as values in this country. There is something deeply wrong with the way RE is being taught in many, many schools, and we need to keep an eye on it. Okay? When did RE become a risk to our children's faith? With, I mean, this is a form of manipulation and grooming. Honestly, can you, I'd go as far as saying that. Children are being groomed, right, away from Islam. You, you kind of, you have this position of trust and then you deliberately, like, you sow these seeds of doubt into their minds, right? So that they can, so that they eventually end up uh, questioning their faith. Is that your job as an RE teacher? Is that, is that an RE teacher's job? I don't think so.
as you can see, brothers and sisters, we've got so many problems, so many different things are confusing our children about their iman, attacking their iman from so many different directions. So, uh, and we don't really have the solutions to these problems yet. We haven't got the infrastructure. We haven't got the means to be able to uh, put up a defense, fight back, push back, etc. So what we have to do is protect our children ourselves. So in order to help young people um, understand their faith in a way that makes them more resilient to to these doubts and to the kind of tactics employed by many different people, not just RE teachers, but but others as well, who uh, who earn their trust, gain their trust, and then confuse them. Um, I've developed a, a program for young people between the ages of uh, 14 and 18 um, called the Youth Mentoring Program. I'd like you to consider sending your children on it, especially if they're on their way to finishing their uh, madrasa education. Uh, there's very little uh, contact time, but what we do is we go through these types of questions and we we discuss and study the foundations of Iman together and we engaging in some mentoring based activities as well. It's an excellent way to lay a foundation that will then hopefully inshallah keep them keep them safe uh, throughout their teen years as well as um, give them a reference point, right? Someone, something to uh, to refer back to, right? So they, you know, they'll always have a teacher to refer back to who's addressed these issues with them, as well as you know, uh, a, a course, as well as resources to refer back to, uh, as well. Inshallah. Ta so I'd like you to check it out. Uh, more details uh, in the info to this video. Inshallah.